Hello and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop, your one stop for co-op news and playthroughs, and I'm super excited! I'm Peter, and I'm playing Marvel Champions today! Yes, it is the release of a couple new packs, actually three new packs. There's Wolverine, which you'll see me playing today. I'm playing the pre-constructed deck right out of the box. There's also Storm, which I will also have a video playing right out of the box, pre-constructed. And Mojo Mania, which is a small, short scenario pack, three-card campaign, if you will, that I'm not going to show off till next week. But if you want to see the spoilers for all these cards, you might not see all of them in this video today. If I don't get through them all, this is really just a first playthrough, me trying to feel out the deck see how it feels to play. But if you want to see the spoiler for every single card, we have that on our One Stop Co-op Shop streamed channel under an unboxing video. So go check that out over there. But without further ado, let's get started. And today I'm going to be playing Logan, who has a ridiculous six recovery set up. Search your deck and discard pile for the Wolverine Claws upgrade and put it into play. So pretty simple. Six hand size, 10 life. The Wolverine's Claws, the way they work is they're a permanent upgrade that you keep in play. It's a hero action. You can exhaust Wolverine Claws to choose to an attack event in your hand and take damage equal to its printed cost and then play that event ignoring resource costs and the attack gains piercing as well. So bottom line is you pay life instead of paying the normal resources you'd pay to play an attack event. You can do that once per turn because you do have to exhaust the claws to play it. But Wolverine is a 2-2-2 with five card hand size on this side and healing factor. So after player phase begins, heal two damage. So bottom line is he can take damage to play attack events from his hands, and then he can heal that damage just by being Logan. All right, and we are playing against Sabretooth, because why wouldn't you? I mean, one of the new scenarios, arch nemesis over here, uh, Sabretooth schemes for one, he attacks for two. Uh, after Sabretooth activates against you, discard the top card of the encounter deck and heal Sabretooth equal to the boost icon shown there. So Sabretooth will be healing as well. But Sabretooth's mission here is to find and defeat the Senator. So the way this uh, scenario works is Robert Kelly cannot be healed by any player. You can't put upgrades on him. When defeated, the first player detaches Robert Kelly from the scheme and takes control of him. Advance the main scheme to 2A and flip this card and place it next to the main scheme. And you can't thwart anything off the main scheme as long as this is in play, obviously because of the hazard icon here. But has five threat on it per player to start. Solo game, it's only five threat. But this is the big thing. So you are, our goal here is to save Robert Kelly. So force response, after resolving step one of the villain phase, deal two damage to Robert Kelly. Three instead if there are six per player threat on this card. So you're not going to lose by scheming out, at least at the beginning of this scenario. You're going to lose if Robert Kelly dies, and he's going to be taking two damage a turn. So while Robert Kelly is attached, find the Senator, treat the text box as if it were blank. So we don't worry about Robert Kelly's text box right now. All we're doing is worrying about he's going to be taking two damage a turn at the beginning of the villain phase. But let's go ahead and take a look at our six card starting hand and see what we have. So we have an ally, Sunfire. He's a 1-2 uh, X-Man response. After you play Sunfire from your hand, spend a lightning resource to choose an attachment with the text hero action or hero response and discard it. Well, we don't have any of those, but uh, allies are never bad. Out of my way, uh, deal three damage to an enemy, five instead if that enemy has guard or patrol. We don't have any of those, but three damage is not nothing. Uh, we can exhaust our claws to just do a mean swing to add plus three to our attack which is never a bad thing. We have a resource here. When you spend this resource to play an attack event, that event deals one additional damage. Ah, regenerative healing. You can either heal for four or discard each stunned and confused status. Again, don't have any of those. Or lunging strike. Deal eight damage to an enemy. If you exhausted Wolverine's claws to play this card, the attack gains overkill. Well, that seems like a good card to start with, so I can play it on my first turn. Um, I'm going to keep Sunfire also, but I'm going to discard the other four cards and see if I get anything else. Alrighty. We got Slice and Dice, another attack event. Deal three damage to an enemy, deal three damage to an enemy again. So that's a double attack. 
We've got uh, play under any player's control, max one per player. After your hero attacks and defeats a minion, deal one damage to your hero and discard Battle Fury to ready your hero. Uh, we got Berserker's Barrage over here. Deal four damage to an enemy. If the attack defeats an enemy, you may take two damage to repeat this ability. So you can deal four damage, attack, and deal four damage again. I got better uh, when you would be defeated by an enemy attack. Instead, set your hit points to five, ready your identity, and discard this card. So that is the bring you back to life card. All right, so I've got some interesting choices here. So I think I am going to obviously flip over. I'm going to use myself to thwart for two. We're going to try to rescue the senator over here. But in the meantime, we are also going to just try to destroy Sabretooth because that's what Wolverine does is just attacks and attacks some more. So now we are going to play Lunging Strike, which is this eight damage attack. Um, I am going to exhaust my claws to do that, which means I am taking three damage myself. And then discarding Lunging Strike, of course, he goes from 13 down to five. I mean, do I just kill him turn one? Why not? So he doesn't get his healing factor. Yeah, so I'm going to hold Sunfire in my hand, but I'm going to play Slice and Dice, which deals three damage to an enemy and then deals three damage to an enemy. I'm going to play, pay three resources for that. The only card I'm going to keep in my hand is Sunfire. And yeah, that's six damage. So from 13 life down to zero on turn one, this might be the quickest first play and impression video ever. Uh, talk about actually like doing what a lot of these uh, heroes claim to want to do, which is just doing a ton of damage up front. So we have defeated the first part of Sabretooth. Um, so now he becomes a 2-2. So his attack doesn't get any worse. Just his scheming gets a little worse. He does come in with toughness, which he did not have. On his original side, Force Response after Sabretooth activates against you, discard the top card, and he's going to heal. He does have 15 hit points over here, but yeah, if I have another round like last one, 15 hit points won't be an issue, apparently. Now we do have to put Tough on him as well. That seems like a pretty good turn one. I'm going to hold on to Sunfire just so I have somebody to help me block next turn, do a little bit of extra damage as well. Um, and maybe, who knows, maybe a minion comes out, but I'm going to draw my next four cards. One, two, three, wait, yeah, I dropped a five. All right, and we will go over those in a minute, but let's go ahead and do the enemy phase first. We're going to go ahead and add one by uh, stock by Sabretooth. That's two damage on uh, Robert Kelly afterwards, because this isn't up to six per player. And then Sabretooth is going to attack me. Oops, I guess I should have readied up myself as well. Sabretooth is going to attack for two. I am just going to take that attack. We'll see what the boost is. That boost is only one, so that's going to be a total of three damage done here. So my seven hit points are going to go down to four, and then we will see what else this dastardly villain will do to us. Oh, it's Blob. Blob has guard, six life, force response. After Blob attacks and damages character, stun that character. So there you go, a six damage blob in front of me as well. So let's see if I got some stuff to do some damage and deal with blob this turn. Um, but the first thing I do at the beginning of my turn is heal up two. Oh, and actually after Sabretooth activated, he should have, so actually blob, I don't have a blob in front of me. He is going to heal for two. So after he attacked me for that three, he would heal for two. So this would not be the card in front of me. Now he is at max hit points because I, I flipped him to his second side, but instead the villain is going to scheme. So the villain is going to scheme. Sabretooth schemes for two plus a boost of one. So a total of three. So now this is up to four threat on this scheme over here. And then Sabretooth will heal again, even though again, he's full health. He's gonna go ahead and flip that card and he would have healed three in that situation. So it's actually good that I took him out because if I didn't defeat that entire first side, he would have been healing this whole time. He would have healed two the first time and three that time. So he would have healed five. So you can see why he can be a pain. You kind of want to either do it all or do none of it. With that being said, I have a new 
ally in. I got Psylocke. Enters play with two psionic counters. When Psylocke attacks an enemy, remove one psionic counter from her to confuse the enemy and deal a damage to it. Seems good. So it is similar to, um, I was saying this in the unboxing video, very similar to one of my favorite characters, Ironheart. The only difference here is it's a confuse instead of a stun. We got a weapon X. Play only if you have a mutant, which I do, of course, on my alter ego side. Alter ego action, exhausted to take a damage. Discard cards from your deck until you discard an identity specific card and add it to your hand. So it's a way to draw extra cards. I don't think I'm going to worry about that. We got another Battle Fury. Again, if you defeat something, take some damage and ready yourself. Track by scent. Ooh, here we go. Remove three threat from a scheme. If this removes the last threat from a scheme, draw two cards. That seems good because there's exactly three threat on Find the Senator right now. And then, of course, I still have Sunfire. So let's go ahead and pay for track by scent. So we're going to spend Psylocke and Battle Fury. I hate to lose Psylocke because I do want to kind of flip down, but we're going to track by scent. Uh, actually, I'm going to draw two cards, huh? Which would put me, you know what? I am not going to spend Psylocke. Instead, I'm going to spend Weapon X. So I got two allies here. Hopefully I can get one of them out. So track by scent again is going to remove three threat. So we remove the three fret threat from find the Senator and I get to draw two cards. So the cards I drew are a genius, which will help me pay for Psylocke and another track by scent, which probably won't be used this turn since I have exactly four resources plus Psylocke. All right. So, when defeated, the first player detaches Robert Kelly from this scheme and takes control of him. Advance the main scheme to 2A and flip this card and put it by the main scheme. So let's go ahead and take control of Robert Kelly. Robert Kelly says, the first player controls Robert Kelly. He does not count against your ally limit and cannot have player cards attached. Forced to interrupt when an enemy resolves an undefended attack against you, deal da that damage to Robert Kelly. So you're going to have to start blocking that damage. All right. And then we have protect the Senator over here, which says Robert Kelly can't be healed by a player card effects and cannot have upgrades attached to your response. After your hero defends against an attack from Sabretooth, you can spend two resources of any type to ready your hero. Only the player who controls Robert Kelly can trigger this ability. So you can spend two resources to ready your hero after you defend. All right, so we're going to go to 1A over here. So this one goes away. It says, or I'm sorry, 2A, deal each player a face down encounter card. So we will do that. We will get that face down encounter card. And then we'll see what this scheme says. So this has a total threat of nine when complete defeat Robert Kelly. So we can't let it get to nine or Robert Kelly is dead. And when you lose play, you lose the game. So there's a little bit more time pressure now. Robert Kelly will be getting attacked and the main scheme will be getting threat on it. I do think I'm going to play Psylocke. So again, she costs four. I have my genius for two track by scent and Sunfire. So that's a total of four resources. I'm going to pay to put Psylocke into play. I'm going to attack with Psylocke. So Psylocke attacks for one. Oh, well, let's actually put her two counters on her. So just as a reminder, what she does, uh, she starts with two counters. Psylocke attacks an enemy, remove a counter from her, and confuse the enemy and deal it one damage. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to attack for one, which knocks off tough. Then we're going to do one damage. So this 15 goes down to 14. I don't know if that'll matter because Sabretooth probably end up healing anyway. But the big thing is we are putting a Confused on Sabretooth, which allows Wolverine to flip down. He doesn't get his healing factor, but he does get his heal of six, which seems pretty stinking good. At the end of my turn, I'm going to go ahead and draw up to six cards and we will see what we have for next turn. I don't remember if I healing factored at the beginning of this turn. I feel like I didn't, but... It's okay. I'm at four health. I'm just going to live with it. We will see what comes starting next turn. It may not matter anyway <laughs> at this point because 
Wolverine does massive amounts of damage very, very quickly. Okay, so we are going to do the villain turn. First thing we do is add one threat here. Then Sabretooth would scheme, but is confused because he didn't scheme, doesn't heal. So we're just going to take a second encounter card, and we're going to flip them up one at a time and see what we got. So we got a medical emergency. So it gets two on it, plus a hinder value of two. So that's going to be for a total of four. One victory, so when it's defeated, it goes away. When defeated, heal two damage from Robert Kelly. Well, that's nice. So it's got an acceleration on it, and then it's going to heal Robert Kelly if we actually get rid of it, which we'll see. I don't know that I care or not. Alter Ego, this card gains Surge. So let's get rid of that and draw Pyro. After Pyro attacks you, discard the top two cards of your deck. Take one indirect damage for each printed resource cost. All right, let's take a look at the cards that I got. I mean, it starts with this right here. Lunging Strike, 8 damage to an enemy. If you exalt the claws for that, uh, it gains Overkill. So I could Overkill Pyro right into Sabretooth. Seems like a good one. We also have Precision Strike, which is an attack. Deal 2 damage to an enemy. If that attack defeats the enemy, heal 2 damage from your hero. I don't know that I need that this turn. Ooh, we got the uh, Adamantium Skeleton. It gives me plus four hit points and plus one attack. On my basic attacks, gain piercing as well. So I got piercing from the claws for my other stuff, but I would also get it on my attacks. We got Colossus. Reduce the cost by one if your identity is a mutant or X-Men trait and has toughness. So that's three damage, which seems pretty good, or a chumper for me. Which or not chumper because he's got tough. So that seems good. We got another precision strike and berserker barrage, which is deal four damage to an enemy. If the attack defeats an enemy, you can take two damage to do it again. All right. Well, I'm going to start by recovering six because I'm only at four hit points. I think I forgot to recover at the beginning of last turn, but that's okay. So that's going to put me up to 10 hit points, which is way better than six. And then I'm going to flip over. And I am going to use my claws. And just as a reminder, as a hero ex action, I can exhaust them to basically pay with life instead of resources. And the attack gains piercing, which I don't need the piercing part. But I'm going to do it on my lunging strike, which is normally a three cost card to do eight damage. And if I use the claws, I get overkill. So I do need to take three damage for that. One, two, three. And then I'm going to do 8 damage. So Pyro is going to take 4 of that damage. And then the other 4 is going to spill over onto the villain, who is now down to 10 damage. We're going to keep our eyes right there because Psylocke's about to attack. So Psylocke attacks the villain, which removes 1 hit point. So it goes down to 9. And then we remove the counter to do 1 more damage to get down to 8. And we are going to confuse the villain. Now, it doesn't matter at this point because I am up. Oh, Psylocke should have been taking consequential damage for both of those attacks, by the way. So <laughs> Psylocke's definitely a two damage. And then do I put my skeleton in? Do I just do the four damage from Berserker Barrage, which would get him down to... So I could do Berserker Barrage for four, getting him down to four. Then I could do Precision Strike for another two, literally getting him down to two damage. Or I could just put Colossus in and basically end up killing him next turn anyway. I want to put Colossus in just because it's fun. I hope I get Fastball Special because that would be awesome. So I have four cards sitting in front of me. Um, so I'm going to spend all four of those cards to pay for Colossus. Colossus comes in with Tough. I'm not going to mess with that. I am not going to... Oh, it actually only costs three because I am a mutant or X-Men. So actually, I am going to hold on to Berserker Barrage, which is a four damage attack, and then I can take two damage to repeat this ability. Let's do that. All right, so I'm going to hold on to Berserker Barrage, and I'm going to draw four more cards, one of which is Mean Swing. By the way, let's ready up and draw up. Ooh, there's the Fastball Special. <laughs> Out of my way. All right, so Jubilee uh, is the other one. All right, so we are going to do some killing next turn 
probably going to end pretty quickly, but I will go over what these cards I have in my hand are. Again, if you want to see all the cards that are available in this deck, you can go to my unboxing video on the One Stop Co-op Shop channel. I'll have a link in the show notes. All right, so I'm going to add two threats to the main scheme. I'm going to have Sabretooth attack me. So Sabretooth attacks for two plus a boost card of star here. Attach this card to Sabretooth. Attach to Sabretooth. Sabretooth gains stalwart. This character cannot be stunned or confused. Um, okay, fine. So my confuse goes away. I think I'm okay with that. I can spend one of each resource to get rid of it, but... I don't really care. It doesn't add to attack or anything else. So it is only two damage. I Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't declare. I was going to block with Colossus, obviously, because that's why I kept around with the tough. Okay, so that was a block with Colossus. So now it is back to... Oh, now he heals. He's going to heal for whatever this boost is. So that's two more. So it goes from eight life up to ten. And then gets an encounter card. And let's see what that card does. Sabretooth strikes. When revealed, deal one damage to Robert Kelly. You may exhaust your hero to prevent this. Nah, that's all right. Robert Kelly can be up to three damage. I'm not going to worry about that. And because that is not him attacking uh, or activating, he doesn't get to heal. All right. Well, let's look at what this fastball special says, because this seems pretty good. So it's the team up between Colossus and Wolverine, and I do have both of them in play right now. Hero, action, attack, deal X damage to an enemy. Oh, before I forget, go ahead and get our two life back at the beginning of our turn. All right, uh, deal X damage to an enemy where X is the total attack of Colossus and Wolverine. So Wolverine's attack is two, Colossus is three, so that would be a total of five damage. So I'm going to go ahead and pay one card to do that. I will pay Mean Swing as my one resource to do the Fastball Special. So a total of five damage to Sabretooth. Yeah, Wolverine dishes out a ton of damage, especially Aggression. I have never seen an Aggression deck actually play this aggressively before. Uh, so I did pay for that, so I still have my claws. So let's look at the three cards that are in my hand. I could actually pay for them, don't even need to use my claws. So deal four damage to the enemy. If it defeats the enemy, take two damage and repeat this ability. We also have deal three damage to an enemy, five instead, if he, they have guard or patrol, which he doesn't. Uh, we also have Jubilee. It's a one, one, two cost, two life. After Jubilee enters play, choose an enemy until the end of the phase while Wolverine or Jubilee is making a basic attack against that enemy, they get plus two for that attack. So that's basically plus four, which equals the Berserker Barrage, and I get an ally. Seems like the best play. So I'm going to spend these two cards to pay for Jubilee. So again, uh, put her down here. So again, till the end of the phase, uh, I'm going to choose Sabretooth as the enemy. Um, and it doesn't say minion or whatever. It says enemy until the end of the phase. Wolverine or Ju when while Wolverine or Jubilee is making a basic attack, they get plus two for that attack. So Jubilee is going to attack, take her consequential damage. She will do three damage, so knocking him from five down to two. And then Wolverine's going to attack for two, and then doing an additional two. So that is down to negative two life. And that's even without having to kill Psylocke over here, who could have done one more damage if we needed. Um, or maybe she'd thwart for two just to, to keep it pretty safe. Well, I don't know that I've ever killed a villain so quickly. Uh, <laughs> this deck is very aggressive. Uh, certainly being able to take damage to play cards is really good. Uh, let's look. I guess we'll look through a couple of more cards here, and then I'll give you some final thoughts on my first playthrough. Um, when you spend this card to play an attack event, the event does uh, plus one damage. We got Warrior's skill over here. We never saw that one. Uh, it's three uses, max one per player. When your hero attacks, remove a Warrior counter from this, and the attack deals one additional damage. So that's good for like that one card that attacked for three, then attacked for three again, or whatever else. It's nice how you can choose when to do it, and you just have to remove the counter. So it's not like you have to exhaust the card or anything. We saw Regenerative Healing. 
lets you get rid of uh, stunned and confused effects or heal yourself. Uh, slice and Dice is again works with warrior skill to do three damage twice or four damage with warrior skill. Berserker Frenzy. I don't remember if we saw this one or not. After Wolverine takes any amount of damage from an enemy, draw a card. After you flip to your alter ego, get rid of it. So it's good for, uh, we know card advantage in games like this is great. And the only way to lose it is by flipping down. Uh, so out of my way, again, it's three damage. It does more if they've got guard or patrol. Logan's cabin is a location we hadn't seen. We didn't draw through it. Exhaust Logan's cabin, shuffle a Wolverine card from your deck. Uh, for, I'm sorry, from your discard pile back into your deck. So that's kind of nice to get cards like you know, his ridiculous attacks over and over again. Um, yeah, mean swing, precision strike we've seen, and battle fury we've seen. So yeah, that is basically it for Logan's deck. So my initial thoughts, I mean, <laughs> I have had the longest games ever against Sabretooth. Now, to be fair, this is standard and not expert, but still, Sabretooth heals an awful lot. I don't know that I've ever killed a uh, a villain on turn one, <laughs> like gotten past the stage of the villain before. I I've played a lot of aggressive decks in my past, but the fact that he can take damage to play attack cards and has three cost attack cards that are doing like eight damage or six damage is really good. And to get both of them on turn one and be able to play both of them on turn one, I mean, so if you draw those two cards turn one and you know you mulligan for them, you can definitely play both of them every time turn one. And so you're talking about, or if you get the two eight, that's 16 damage turn one. Not many villains are gonna live through that. And they both cost three. Or if you get the two sixes, that's still 12 damage. So anywhere from 12 to 16 damage, if you end up getting, you know, just two cards and just two out of four cards in your starting hand uh, is pretty good. Yeah, there's no buildup with Wolverine. <laughs> I mean, he really doesn't have many cards that come in play. Certainly the plus one attack card is pretty good. That gives him, I, I didn't play it. It's the adamantium skeleton over here. Didn't end up playing this, but it's a really good card. Plus four hit points, plus one attack, and your basic attacks gain piercing. Um, he has a lot of piercing. He doesn't really care about tough. Has several ways to get rid of multiple villains with Berserker Barrage. Uh, four damage, you take some damage yourself, but you get to do it again, and you can keep doing that over and over and over. So if there's a ton of minions in play, all with a, a little bit of life, that's awesome. Fastball special was super fun to do. Uh, I know that's the card that uh, a lot of people were looking forward to when they knew Wolverine was coming. I mean, anytime Colossus gets to throw Wolverine, it's a pretty cool deal. And you don't have to exhaust the characters to do it. So it's a minimum of five damage. If Wolverine gets his upgrade for plus one attack and plus four hit points, that's another damage. So now you're talking six damage. If he plays the aggression you know, that gives him plus one attack. Now we're talking seven damage from fastball special for one cost. There aren't many cards that are one cost that'll do it. And if you use this aggressive energy card here to pay for it, now you're talking eight damage for one cost for that one card. Uh, yeah, there, there's a lot of good things in this deck. I am typically not one, even one playing aggression that really goes all in the way I did this game but it was just so easy. It was, it was seamless. So I think it's what people are going to want from Wolverine. I think people are going to be super happy about his deck. I think people, you know, you want to be aggressive. You want to take a lot of damage and deal a lot of damage. He gets himself beat up, but he heals right back up. Even when it's down to four hit points, which again, I think I would have healed up to six. I, I think I forgot to heal that one turn, but I mean, he has healing six on his other side. So who cares? <laughs> like six recovery is pretty ridiculous. And you just flip over and you use those hit points right away to um, do some damage. So as long as you have allies to block for you, so you're not totally killing yourself every turn, I don't see any reason why he wouldn't be able to do some damage early. And I pretty easily got two four cost allies out as well. Well, I guess cost this is only three um, because of his discount, X-Man discount. But yeah, Jubilee is really good. Again, plus two damage for Jubilee, plus two damage for, I mean, so basically for two cost, she does one attack plus her two extra damage plus Wolverine's two extra damage. So it's like five damage for two cost and can be a chumper on that turn. So yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. 
Wolverine's deck's going to be so much fun. There's going to be a lot of playing it. It's very, very powerful. I mean, I wouldn't even mind taking it the way it is out of the box and playing through expert mode against some of these villains. Again, this is a villain I've continuously had hour to two hour games in solo with, and Wolverine took him down like he was nothing. So it was very fun. And Wolverine didn't even get to do like what he wants to do, which is kill lots of minions and stuff like that and overkill. He did that once, but... I mean, really, his goal is to do tons and tons of damage and take out lots of different enemies, not just the boss, but he can take down the boss as well. So not a problem. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and watch our storm video, which will also be coming out, as well as go look at that unboxing video. And we have timestamps on that. So you can go straight to the Wolverine unboxing. You can go straight to the storm one or you can go to Mojo Mania and see all the cool stuff that comes in that encounter set as well. I'm really excited about that one. There were some fun modular encounters that go with some of your other sets as well. So anyway, thanks for joining us and we will see you soon. Bye.